After leaving Coventry City, John embarked on a new challenge by joining Leicester City. Against all odds, Leicester became Premier League champions two years later. While the players received most of the plaudits, has becoming champions had an impact on the grounds team? So towards the end of my time at the arena, I, uh, I moved across to work for the actual Rico Arena itself because, um, as was highlighted in the press, Coventry City moved away from the stadium to move it north to play at Northampton. Um, but I was employed by the Rico to manage the stadium and also a training facility where the, our academy were playing um, in preparation, hopefully, for the football club to return. Um, as it transpired, as we got to sort of July, August time, we knew it wasn't going to happen. So it left me in a bit of a predicament. And come December, we had had maybe two or three games at the Rico that were corporate. Um, so I needed a new challenge. And fortunately, the job at Leicester came up. Uh, this was a January in the year they got promoted, so for me it was an ideal time. We d I didn't know we were going to be promoted, but it looked odds on when I joined in the January that they were going to be promoted to the Premier League. So a great opportunity, a career goal for me from a very young age was to be a head groundsman in the Premier League by the time I was 30, uh, and at this point I was 28, so we were well on track. And we achieved promotion that year, and what a even in the short space of four or five months I was at the football club, I got a real good feel for how this place works. Um, I had a lot of work to do when I came in. Um, the pitches at the training ground needed a lot of investment. Um, the, the club's remit really was is that they want to improve standards. They didn't really know how to get to the point where they need to get to and it was my job to guide them in the right direction. So in the first six weeks I was sat in front of seven directors proposing my business plan to improve the pitches across the board. So I set out a five year plan to improve the pitches, not only the pitches themselves, but the structure of the department, the resource in terms of machinery and budget, available budget to maintain the pitches, and really sort of went in and turned into a bit of a salesman, to be honest. And I think it's something that the modern day grounds manager has to turn into because we have to sell ourselves, we have to sell our industry, and we also have to sell the fact that we're professionals about what we do. And when you set out a presentation and deliver it to directors, they have a very short window of opportunity to catch their attention. So you have to make it snappy, you have to make it to the point. Um, and there's usually two things they want to know is how much it's going to cost me and when do you want it. Um, so I did sort of circle a lot of the presentation around that. And I walked out within the first, first at that first meeting with £1.2 million in my hand to improve the training round. Uh, that for me was frightening because I had never in my wildest dreams imagine raising purchase orders for that sort of money um, and that was only one part that was a capital expenditure we then further in further invested in machinery further invested in staff and it really has been a building blocks and over the course of the past three years and i've been here three years in january um, we have built a great structure in terms of department all the staff are really well structured in terms of salaries um, and we've got a real great balance of people within the department and a real solid team of people. Coupled with that, we've spent over in excess of three million pound at the training ground to improve the pitches year on year. When I walked in the 14 years, they hadn't had any work done to them whatsoever, apart from the general maintenance and renovation works. So it really was a big challenge and something that we've managed to achieve in three. Uh, I'm exceptionally proud of that. I'm exceptionally proud of how far we've come and I'm also exceptionally proud of how the professionalism of what we do has been embraced by the directors, embraced by the owners, and they all take a real common interest in what we do. Um, only three weeks ago we had a rake out on the pitch, which is something that we've never used before um, this season. So we were raking the pitch and the owners, as you may have seen, land their helicopter in the middle of the pitch after every match. Um, so we were raking and hondering up around that. And I stopped in order to let the them walk to the helicopter. But because they're so interested in what we do, he waved me down. And then as I was waving down, he got me to explain what we were doing. So, again, it's something I'm very proud of that we've embraced what the club want and got on side with their expectations. We've met their expectations and hopefully exceeded them. And, um, you know, they've really took an interest in us, a vested interest in us. And that showed with the financial support from the board, the owners. Um, and just the general interest around the club about what we do. Um, so, you know, for me, it's been a great move, a career move that is probably one of the best decisions I've ever made. And it's given me a real opportunity, being in the Premier League, 
to showcase groundsmanship at the highest level, uh, to operate a department at what I perceive as the highest level. Um, and we've been part of a great success story. You know, Leicester have gone from teetering relegation and the great escape, as people dubbed it, only two seasons ago, to last year winning the league. You know, and we were all part of that. And this club is very much about embracing the staff. And the staff here, there's some phenomenal departments, and I like to think that we're one of them. Um, and I like to think that we played a small part in the success. I'm not saying, obviously, it was all down to the players. You know, there's, there's no two ways about that. But for me, I think that when the players are training every day on pitches that you've produced and improved year on year, um, and they're playing at the stadium where the pitch has improved year on year because we're getting more and more resource, improving structures, improving resource budgets, introducing lighting rigs and all these different variable things that come as a grounds manager and a grounds team, um, you really become part of what they do day in, day out. And we feel a big part of this football club, me and my staff feel a real big part of this football club. And the people that are involved are exceptionally good people. From the minute I walked in, I must say that I, I always thought that the club would get success. It was just a matter of everything clicking into place because they had the sports science side who we work really closely with, um, physiotherapists, all the analysts, all the scouts, the management, the coaching, and then we encompass the ground staff into that mix. Um, I really thought that once all these little things gelled together that we'll get the success and that coattailed off that year that we we stayed up in the Premier League and the form that we showed at the end of that season, we rolled it into the next season when we won the league. And I always thought success would come. I didn't quite think we'd win the league, to be perfectly honest, but I always knew that this club can maintain success. And I believe now that even when they were having a, a rough season this year, you know, I still believe that the fundamentals are there and the foundations of this football club are exceptionally solid. Um, and we are part of the foundations, no doubt about that. You know, the players and the coaching staff are at the top of that pyramid and we are the foundations to it. Um, but we all feel just as important as everyone else because the club makers feel that way not just by, they don't necessarily come pat us on the back and say, oh, you're doing a great job. But what they do back us with is the resource and all the tools we need to do our job. And that, to me, shows that they're behind us 110%. And we feel part of the success story, and rightly so, um, because we're, we're an integral part to this football club, I believe. And that's certainly how I market our department as, a, as an integral part to the success of a football club. And pitches in particular are our the office of footballers that's where they do all their work during the week you know at the training ground when they're on there four or five days a week they're training on what you're producing and again like I said earlier they're playing on the stadium pitch that you're producing and we are managing we're in the entertainment business but we're managing big assets if you counted up the hundreds of millions of pounds worth of asset that we've got playing on our football pitches that is some serious responsibility um, but with the responsibility comes accountability and we are accountable for every action of this department and again it always the foundations of professionalism and perceiving pro professionalism and actually showing people that we are a professional outfit, we're a professional industry um, and we our record keeping I believe is unbelievable, You know, we, we go into great detail to record everything to ensure that we are accountable um, but we can also show people what we do and we can look back on our records and see what we did well, see what we did not so well and make improvements and it's all about the constant improvement cycle and that really is about what my department's about you know no it's not for everybody and I understand that and not everybody will do what we do but what we do here for Leicester City sat in our business model as a football club and not necessarily a multifunctional venue the focus is on football and that works really well for us um, you know as grounds, as grounds managers and also as groundsmen we should embrace the fact that like I said we are part of an entertainment industry um, and there will be times where we need to adapt to change and if you can be proactive with that and as, as I said earlier the lesson I learned at the RICO was to be proactive and outline the consequence um, it can probably help you secure more resource because if they have a concert we might need a bit more resource and that gives us more justification to go to the board with our cap in our hands and say for this reason we need X, Y and Z piece of machinery or X, Y and Z members of staff. Um, so we have to be adaptable and not obstructive um, in my opinion and that works sat in here. 
And if a club come to me tomorrow and said we need to be more multifunctional, we need to look at concerts in the summer, we need to look at big events in the summer or concerts in the winter or whatever they come to me with, we'd find a way to make that work. You know, it might be changing the way that we manage the pitch, it might be changing the type of pitch we have out there. But as a grounds manager in a very amenable department, we will make the necessary changes to make it work for the football club. It won't come without a bit of a fight, don't get me wrong, because we always try and put our point across that pitch comes first. But you always have to be adaptable and understand that there is a wider business. It's not just about you and your pitch. It's about how much revenue the club can generate from different angles. And that really has um, rounded me into you know, what I believe is someone that the club value a lot, um, respect a lot. Um, a lot, and that, you know, in turn gives the respect to the department and all the lads are respected from top to bottom here at Leicester City and I believe that um, I've really enjoyed building that and we are continuing to build it and we will continue to build and we'll probably never stop trying to improve things. So that's been a really important learning curve for me 